back everybody to this tutorial. Today I will talk a little bit about the RPM and the way you can install a package through the RPM. Anyway, if you just type in RPM as before, dash dash help, there are a ton load of options here. More so that we can, than can possibly be hoped to cover in the entire course. But don't worry about it. You generally won't be using a lot of those. You will be using only a couple of them. Uh, to erase packages, to delete them, to uninstall them, to install packages, and to query whether a certain package is already installed on your system, which is very, which are very nice features to have. Again, you would use RPM to install something that you would download from the internet, provided of course that it's properly packaged for Red Hat, which means that it needs to have an extension of .RPM. And there are plenty of Linux distributions out there which actually use a .RPM extension, like uh, Fedora, CentOS, and Red Hat. Those three I can think of the bad. Perhaps there are some others, but I am uncertain of this. Anyway, you would download a package from the internet, and let me just show you. I have actually downloaded three to test them out. I have downloaded Apache RPM, Flash plugin, and I have downloaded Nmap. Nmap is basically a security tool for scanning your network for vulnerabilities. Uh, you can also use it to confirm that certain ports are open, that certain services are running, and so on and so forth. But there has been a lot of misuse. However, it is a fantastic networking tool. Anyway, let's just go ahead and clear the screen now. Do LL Nmap. There we go. So we see it there that it has a .rpm extension, this red package that you can see there. And if I wanted to, for example, install it, well, perhaps I should see first whether it is installed. That wouldn't be a bad idea, would it now? So just type in nmap, so without the .rpm, just the name of the package itself, without the extension, press enter, and you can see that the package nmap uh, x86-64 is indeed not installed at all. So let's just go ahead and now type in dash i and let's add a v for verbose output. Or can't open it map. Failed. No such file. Oh yeah. So you need to type in rpm of course at the end. So press enter and there you go. It says preparing packages and nmap of that and that version is now here and on our system. To confirm that it is installed, just do query nmap without the RPM again and it says there you go it lists it there as installed it is up and running on your system suppose we wanted to delete the package to completely remove it from our system we would simply use RPM space dash E and map and there you go press enter it is now removed to confirm that it is removed you can just query it again and you can see that the package is indeed not installed so it's a very nice feature we have there. So query, erase, and install. You can just run a confirmation check. This is a bit of a good example of grep. So let's type in help space pipe grep. And what do we and we're now gonna use quotation marks because we're gonna want to use one of the special characters, so dash uh, the dash and t -t 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 what shall we query for? Let's do the erase. Excellent, there we go. So we've used an escape character as before and used dash and then E under the quotation marks as well. Anyway, it says E dash E dash dash E erase and then a package erases or uninstalls the package. There are some other variants, but dash E will in fact erase the package that you have selected. Anyway, if you wanted to know where I have downloaded it, Look, I have just went to the nmap.org website and I have found the, oops, let's just do a bit of a zoom in. I have found the RPM package here for 64-bit Linux distribution. Now, as a system administrator, you most likely will at some point of time use nmap. I can assure you of that as it is a high quality tool for scanning and probing your network and figuring out where is what, what is functional, what is not, what ports are open and so on. 
but that's not the point here. That's not the objective of this of this particular tutorial. Here I just want to show you that you can actually go onto the net and download a package. Now, a word of caution or a word of warning, take it as you wish. Be very careful in terms of uh, your sources. Be very careful where are you downloading the RPM packages from. Make sure that the sources are in good standing in terms of reputation on the net. And download from verified sources such as nmap.org or you can even go to Adobe Flash Player here. Let me just show you. We can type in Adobe Flash RPM So if I go to the Adobe website, I know that they're legit. I know that they are not going to have, I don't know, any viruses or anything of a kind in their uh, in their software. But you see, we also have these sort of websites. And I, I don't know, I'm not familiar with this one. I think I've downloaded something for my virtual machines from this one, but I definitely wouldn't download something for my main machine. So I'm just looking for the website here. Where is it? So you see, on this one they actually explain how to pull it from the repositories. Let's just say Adobe Flash and let's go to their website immediately. Should have done that straight away. So Adobe Flash Player download. Anyway, this is just another example of me downloading something from a website somewhere. It says select a version to download and you can definitely select the .rpm for other Linux. It says here for other Linux, but you can just, okay, there is even a yum, a yum package, but for this particular tutorial, we are downloading the RPM for other Linux. And you can download it and install it in pretty much the same way that we have in, installed Nmap. Very simple with RPM command and with arguments dash I for install, dash Q for query, and dash E for erase. Feel free to add V into all of that in order to get the verbose output and the most information out of it. Anyway, this was a bit of a short tutorial on how to use RPM. We generally won't be using it that much, but it's also one of the ways to install a software on Linux. The third way would be to actually compile it from the source. However, that is not frequently done. That frequently done as, uh, for example, you would use yum or rpm. Anyway, I bid you all farewell here and I hope, since I sincerely hope to see you in the follow-up tutorial.